I don't think you guys have ranch either or buffalo. I gotta say though, the sauces are everything. How the McDonald's empire built a $100 billion fortune. Subscribe to the channel and comment down below saying I subscribe to enter this month's shout out giveaway. Ever eaten at McDonald's? Statistically, yes, you probably have. In the global fast food industry, no one comes close to their reach, their influence or their dominance. It won't necessarily be cheaper than a Happy Meal, so it's not necessarily less profitable for them. How did it get to where it is? Well, it all started back in 1954. Back then, the McDonald's empire was a relatively modest selection of franchise restaurants owned by brothers Richard and Morris McDonald, the sons of Irish immigrants. Richard and Morris moved to California in their late 1920s with the sole aim of making a million dollars before they turned 50, and they had reached it. They had established the first restaurant 14 years previously in San Bernardino, California, and were content with what they had made for themselves since then. Their innovative fast food joints, boasting assembly line production methods and serving hamburgers at 15 cents were, relatively speaking, a hit. The per ounce cost of something bigger is lower and so I'm just getting better value for my money. Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc was born in Chicago and spent most of his life in Oak Park, Illinois. At age 15, he lied about his age to become a Red Cross ambulance driver in the First World War. He later took a job selling Prince Castle multi-mixers, machines that made milkshakes. After selling a few of these machines to the McDonald's brothers, Kroc was soon wise to the restaurant chain's huge potential, but the McDonald's brothers weren't quite so ambitious. Having achieved their million dollar milestone, they were happy with their lot. Any one thing in isolation itself may not have a huge impact. The power of marketing is when you overlay things. Kroc bought them out. He gave them $2.7 million and an annual royalty of 1.9%. Apparently the McDonald's brothers felt the original offer of 2% sounded too greedy. With the company, Kroc was now going to set about revolutionizing the McDonald's franchising model. This is the Innovation Center, three kitchens that can basically replicate any single McDonald's in the world. There was one problem. Richard and Morris didn't want to surrender the original San Bernardino restaurant. They actually wanted to hand it over to the employees. Kroc, feeling the original McDonald's outlet as integral to the brand wasn't happy. So what did he do? Well, first he ignored the original royalty agreement. To be fair, the rather too forgiving McDonald brothers didn't consider it necessary to get that part in writing, and then he set up a new restaurant nearby to drive it out of business. Kroc got to work. First up, he established a new franchising model. Up until then, franchisees could come along and buy up a McDonald's region, and with that, they'd go about establishing any number of restaurants within it. There was an initial setup fee, but once they had paid up, they were free to make McDonald's their own within the territory they'd purchased. Kroc changed that. Now you wouldn't have to pay any initial fee. All you had to do was pay 1.9% in commission each year. The only catch was that you could only buy one restaurant at a time. Also, there were now a few rules regarding the way you ran your McDonald's franchise day to day. McDonald's in America should bring in the potato wedges and Big Mac chicken, while the fish McBites should remain banished. Every McDonald's restaurant would use an assembly line system, the same one the McDonald's brothers actually created and Kroc was an admirer of. Every McDonald's would work from the same recipes and every McDonald's would serve the same portion sizes. Wherever you went in America, the taste and look and feel of a McDonald's restaurant was always going to be the same. He also made customer experience of paramount importance. When an employee suggested that cost-cutting measure of adding soybeans to hamburgers, Kroc said no. When an order was wrong or even took more than five minutes to arrive, Kroc made sure customers got their money back. McDonald's did more than find a secret recipe for their burgers. They did it for their business as well. He also ensured that the young, inexperienced teenage staff his franchise has invariably employed would be drilled into the earth on just about everything. He established Hamburger University, a 130,000 square foot training facility in Illinois, where employees learned nearly all there was to know about managing a McDonald's restaurant, from how to flick burgers to food hygiene and customer service. Despite his death in 1984, Kroc appears in video lectures at the facility to this day, but he wasn't a totalitarian in all respects. One thing franchisees were given free reign on was how to market their restaurant and products. For example, a McDonald's franchise in Washington DC was allowed to come up with a lovable character to help promote its products, a clown called Ronald McDonald. It was such a success, he eventually became the brand's international mascot. A later study claimed Ronald McDonald was the second most recognizable face in the USA, behind only Santa Claus. Everything is quite fancy except it came on a plastic tray. In 1974, Kroc retired as CEO of the company. A lifelong baseball fan, he spent the rest of his life as the owner of his favorite team, the San Diego Padres. He died 10 years later, having seen his empire grow on an unprecedented scale. By 1983, there were 7,500 McDonald's chains across more than 30 countries. Global sales had reached more than 8 billion. Despite criticism from some of his aggressive business tactics, Kroc's legacy as one of the greatest business leaders of all time is surely secured. The potato wedges are soft and crispy at the same time, 
and seasoned with the perfect amount of salt. Ray Kroc was a decisive business person with a strong leading mindset, but at the same time, he wasn't afraid to listen to the opinions of others. Without his collaborative approach to marketing, McDonald's would have probably never produced one of its most iconic emblems. There are plenty of lessons to be learned from a business leader like Ray Kroc, but as ever, one of the most important examples he set was surely that of transformation. Kroc didn't accept McDonald's as the finished article. He saw that changes to the business model needed to be made and duly set about making them. And that spirit of transformation still exists in the company today. From ad slogans, you'll enjoy the difference to I'm loving it. From the classic golden arches to modern laid back coffee shop interiors. From the super sized Big Mac to sliced apples and grapes, McDonald's has never stood still for too long. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.